The remake of the classic Candyman movie from the 90s was just released in theaters. The film, directed by Nia DaCosta and produced by Jordan Peele, revisits the lore of the original movie and a much different Cabrini Green. Legend is, if you say his name five times while looking in the mirror, he appears in the reflection and kills you. Who would do that? Candyman. Candyman. And joining us with her take on the film is Sherry Flanders, a freelance writer with the Chicago Reader who wrote about the film. Sherry, thanks for joining us. We're going to be careful not to say his name too many times. Um, so <laughs> for those of thanks us... Thanks for having me. <laughs> of course. So for those of us who've never seen it, what did the original... Uh, what story did the original Candyman tell? Well, the original Candyman told the story of a white grad student who goes to Gabrini Green on search of an ur urban legend. So as she finds that urban legend, she comes in direct confrontation with the actual Candyman and um, spirals into madness, quite frankly. frankly. Okay, so what are some of the highlights then from this new film for you? So for the new film for me, one of the biggest things that it does is that it actually centers the black experience. Whereas the um, last film, the, two, the 1992 film was kind of a bit about white saviorism, going into communities of color, um, disinvested communities and saving them. This was more about our experience um, and um, exploring that trauma um, through our own lenses. Okay, and just so folks know, you know, give us a, a sort of a quick outline on, you know, without any spoilers, on how this film <laughs> goes. Oh, so who, it's who really does what and then hijinks ensue? Yeah. <laughs> it starts with um, Yahya Abdul-Mateen playing the lead character. Uh, he's an artist. He is struggling to get his career going. And he revisits Candyman, the urban legend, to try and use that as inspiration for his art. And then the art begins to take on a life of its own. And then that is when the hijinks ensue. <laughs> okay. So uh, the, as we discussed, the movie revisits where the original took place. Uh, Cabrini Green. Here's a look. I feel really connected to this neighborhood. Cabrini Green. It was the projects. I just moved in around the corner. The old candy factory. I'm an artist. You look up for candy, man. All right, so I'm not going to lie. I've, I've only seen the trailer, and I'm already scared, and I haven't seen the original since 1992 because it was scary. Um, <laughs> but that is, that's the Cabrini Green, you know, that was filmed in 92, obviously. It's much different than it is today. Sherry, how do the two Cabrini Greens differ? Well, um, I love that one of the things that the film does so well, actually, is it revisits the Cabrini Green as it is today, um, and it addresses that legacy of gentrification, how the neighborhood was originally disinvested, and now how we have kind of these new communities moving in, and what that means to be um, a Black aspiring artist, trying to make your own way, uh, knowing that that legacy hangs above you. So on the subject of art, uh, the main character, as you mentioned, he's an artist, a painter, uh, and the creators of the film included art uh, from a variety of great artists. Um, in your review, of course, you write about how the film used art as provocation. Tell us about mm -hmm. that. Yes, um, so it actually, some of the scariest sequences in the movie, and actually it's not so scary, um, that I would want to scare you away from it, I think you actually will love it. Um, we're actually told in the method of shadow puppetry from Manual Cinema, one of our local theaters, and it is really just outstanding, an outstanding technique. Um, it really allows you to tell that story that is just so painful, but in a way that keeps kind of a creative distance. Um, and is also maybe scarier than it could have been if we had actually saw the kind of the blood and gore. Um, I think it actually looks better than that. It's very artistic, uh, very well done. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about manual cinema uh, because they use mm -hmm. that, you know, to portray some of the violent scenes um, versus, mm -hmm. you know, some of the, the blood and gore that horror movies are, are typically known for. Uh, what do you make of, of that kind of artistry of using puppetry instead? Oh, well, I absolutely love it. Um, I think that it allows us to take the art into a place that is, uh, or excuse me, the story and the violence into a place that's more metaphorical instead of literal, and it gives us a much deeper story. It allows us to um, find new connections that we wouldn't have if we were just reacting to the eh. Yeah, just re yeah, just reacting to the, some of the scariness. Um, in your mm -hmm. review, you say you know the film doesn't get into that you know that dread and that horror. Um, but you also talk about you know maybe it's because black audiences don't want to see that sort of trauma as entertainment. Tell us about that. 
Um, yes, absolutely. I think that um, black audiences, we've gone um, in cinema from this place of reverence to this place of kind of uh, explicitly telling our stories, going through the pain, now to a point where we want to tell our stories in a more artistic way. We want to be able to enjoy a typical slasher light summer film, but without having to always go and delve into the deep, dark parts of our soul, right? Um, we want to be able to acknowledge that these things have happened, and that is part of the American experience, um, but also being able to kind of elevate that um, and move forward to make our own new experiences. And Sherry, if you had any criticisms of the film, what, what might that be? Well, I think the one criticism that I might have had um, is that maybe it isn't truly scary. Um, I mean, for my tastes, um, it could have been scarier, but at the same time, I think for people who are a little squeamish, I think that will work well and allow them to enjoy the film. And, and do you think, you know, bottom line, a remake that needed to be made uh, in, you know, with our, our modern lens applied to it? Um, I think actually this is a remake that needed to be made, and I think they did an excellent job with it. Okay, we'll have to leave it there. Um, I, I still might have to skip it because it still looks a little scary, but I appreciate your efforts to avoid scaring me away. Sherry Flanders, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. And be sure to check out our website for more on Manual Cinema. That's the local company that made the Candyman trailer.